Let's check in with the doc and look at things with a wider lens. Pastor Richards on OMG. I know there's the delay, so mm. I know he probably will not have been expecting <laughs> me to drop him in just like that. Uh, right, but right, we right, got he's on, he's on uh, tune in most, Yes, most probably yeah. uh, Pastor's going to be joining us now I'm, I'm confident in him like that oh, Yes, good. yes, look at that Hello, good morning Hey, good morning uh, Good morning, confident Doc in you Listen, like that. she just closed her eyes And <laughs> fell backward into your arms then She just oh exercised all kinds me. of faith <laughs> just, what, That was just faith right there That, that was faith Yes, that was faith <laughs> Well, if I'm, she knows if I'm not going to call the responsible <laughs> thing for me to do is and you're a message ahead of time. Person, you're responsible. Yeah. Good morning, Mario. Good morning, my friend. I trust yeah. that you are well. Yes, I am, and I um, actually I hope also that Jody and um, your family and yes, yes, the Neil yes. family and thank um, you. well, all thank the people, you, thank you. <laughs> all yes, my listeners. Well. Let me not <laughs> thank you. Yes, let me yes. not stop yes, in the one or two. All yeah. my <laughs> listeners. I really, I, I hope I, I can say I hope you are relatively well. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason I use the term relatively, uh, not necessarily that I'm a relativist, come to think of it. Um, <laughs> Oh boy, where am I going with this? <laughs> Look, it, it's not always going to be absolutely well, and mm-hmm. um, so relatively mean compared to um, you know some situations or circumstances, or mm-hmm. the fact that it has been worse before. It, it could be worse. Then I hope that where you are right now, you are at a good place. Can I just leave it there, please? Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> we'll allow that. We'll allow that. <laughs> I had a I had a, um, a good weekend, very very busy one. My weekends mm-hmm. are very busy, mm-hmm. and um, normally on weekends I shut off the news and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But I, I do. So you do very good, very I do. good, very good. Yeah, um, you know, just a, a weekend really should be a change of pace. And mm-hmm. Mario knows I'm going to come with this word. Mm-hmm. You know, reset the clock. Ah. <laughs> You got to reset the clock, and if you just keep that clock winding with the usual thing you did on Monday, Tuesday, mm-hmm. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you don't feel as if you are getting that new start. Mm-hmm. And um, I think God intended this in creation. Um, after six days, He rested. Huh? Mm-hmm. You, 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 let's keep remembering that after six days, God rested, and after that rest day, I'm sure He found other things to do again, but He rested. And so. Mm-hmm. I take a break, and weekends are great for you to take a break, um, you know. So, and it's it's more than a faith thing. Whether you, if you're thinking, oh, it's got a, it's a church thing. No, <laughs> it's more than a faith thing. It's right. just um, in life renewing itself. Uh, you have to allow. Um, even the um, even a snake will change its skin every now and again. Oh gosh, well, where am I going with that, Daniel? Help me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but um, I think I better delve into what I need to delve into mm-hmm. here. Um, and uh, I keep saying you guys can always interject and if you feel the need to. But I uh, two things I really want to talk about this morning, primarily. A little bit about what I shared at church um, this weekend. That's always, from my perspective, an interesting um, endeavor. And then, I, if time permits, I want to talk a little bit uh, um, why facts don't work, because I, it's a frustrating thing to try to convince people <laughs> merely with facts. And I wish more people will understand facts really don't work. I've been at the, in this business long enough to know, I mean, if you're going to try to use facts to convince people, you, you're backing up the wrong tree. You're going to, more likely than not, you're going to lose that argument if you're going to argue on the basis of facts alone. So. Mm. That's going to be an interesting um, piece if I get to it. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about um, what I shared yesterday um, at um, KBC. Well, I most times you, everybody knows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was that? I was going to ask you about your um, yeah. oh, very good. yesterday. I assume that everybody knows what KBC is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kingston Baptist Church. Mario, where the band jams. Is that what you said when you came? <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget <laughs> that. <laughs> Mario said the band jams. Listen, <laughs> really? is, is a movie in there, no? Yeah, it's it's good for people of the music. Stuff. I mean, it's people of really the music. The, the, the sax guy, yeah. um, the sax guy is um, international, and 
Oh God, he has a samba flair, mm. and he plays sax like it's like <laughs> he just beats the thing. And then also he's got on the piano, so yes. we use him on keyboards. Yes. And he brings this kind of like mm -hmm. oh, a serious God, flair to it. It's crazy. I have to restrain myself. I'm in the presence <laughs> of God. Hey, they say okay. make a joyful noise, right? Make a joyful noise. So there it. you go. <laughs> um, but um, in KBC we have a lot of fun. But um, in my sermon, what I try to do with my sermons um, for those who and more people are now beginning seeing that we are online mm -hmm. um, a lot of people from all over um, are checking it out and um, what I try to do with the sermons um, because sometimes we have unless you have been to a church you have this misconception that it's hell fire and brimstone mm -hmm. Um, basically, a, a demagogue gets up there and he pounds on the pulpit and um, just unleashes on the people, and, and that's not me. And, and really, that is um, caricature of what really happens in churches. You have a lot of um, conscious preachers who, um, like me, what we try to do, we try to connect heaven and earth. In very sane messages, we talk to the people. Um, and then we talk about what's going on here on earth and we try to find some connection with um, the, this being called God um, and how he uh, relates if, if there's any connection between your faith in someone called God and what is happening here. So it's very, it, it's spiritual, yes, but it's also social, it's also educational, and it's quite an experience. Um, so yesterday what I talked about, um, uh, I, I talked about issues related to hardship uh, and all things that we can relate to, hardship and how people try to find a safety zone. Uh, this whole issue of wit which is a major issue actually that we have to confront not only with COVID and, and all of that but in many areas in, in relationships love relationships uh, where you have once been bitten you're twice shy um, business failures and all of that we have this tendency to withdraw rather than engage because of the dangers of engagement and so i dealt with that yesterday as a theme um, withdrawal versus engagement um, and the risks that are um, there for you waiting for you when you decide listen this is risky but i'm going to engage and then um, very key was this whole matter that people needed to know that although that there are risks of engagement, there, then if there are consequences, if you keep it safe every time um, and you withdraw and you don't take risks, in fact, there are significant consequences uh, or, uh, in failing to take risks. And so that's the kind of stuff you will hear when you come to our churches, um, not just KBC, but our churches. Generally, I trust that's the type of stuff that you will hear. Mm -hmm. These are all, by the way, current themes um, as we are going through this period over the past three months, withdrawal and engagement and the risks of engagement, consequences if you take the risks, consequences if you don't take the risks. Mm -hmm. um, so yesterday I chose to use, I chose uh, Moses as my prototype. Um, this is great, great, great leader. In fact, greater, greater emancipator than Wilberforce and all the other guys. He's a great emancipator. He's a great leader of people. And um, so I, I, I picked him um, yesterday as my prototype and, and talked um, a little bit about him mm -hmm. and how he struggled uh, in a real time of crisis. And uh, the reason why I use him is that I, I really think that um, not just St. Vincent and the Caribbean, but I think the world is currently in a time of crisis, and we have to figure our way. And I thought that it might be relevant and useful to look at Moses at a time when um, millions of people um, of his nation, Israel, it became his nation, Israel, uh, they were really in, in, in crisis and needed astute leadership to lead them out of it uh, but Moses was playing it safe um, you everybody know that he backed away from where the engagement he, he backed away from um, the, the hotbed of the thing and he found himself dealing with sheep because that was he was basically on his own lockdown he, he pulled away he's like I could be I could stay out here for, in, in a place called Medan he's like I could stay here I don't have to go back to the commercial activity of Cairo um, of Egypt I, I don't have to go back and, and deal with the government I don't have to go back and engage people I could just chill right here I, I, I cool with this so Moses chose withdrawal um, and he, he withdrawal has a certain measure of safety and withdrawal has a certain measure of 
comfort, um, especially when you compare it to the risks of engagement um, in his time, you know, facing the governmental power, bucking the authority, bucking the system, and, and this, is, this is relevant to what's happening now um, because there are significant world systems in place and power brokers and, um, and uh, what is this, this model we talked about, the people who are lined up on the, um, the side of health. Um, or the people who were um, the, the health metrics, um, one caller mentioned, and the econometrics, those who are lying up on the um, side of the economy and business. And there are a number of people, powerful people, uh, that you, anyhow you engage, anyhow you engage, you are going to offend one group or the other. There are governmental people and politicians, and more just like, you know, I, I just rather back away from this. I'd rather not engage. And, and this is, this is stuff that happened. He's like, I'd rather not engage. Um, it's too risky. And then, um, so he's out there and uh, he's struggling with this. So I want to share a couple of things that um, I want to resonate with you. Mm. Why was Moses struggling? Well, first of all, we know that Moses was no um, goody two shoes in, in every respect. He had failures mm -hmm. in his life, and he had issues in his life, and um, so that was part of the reason that he was uh, back in a way because he had what we would call comorbidity. <laughs> he had other issues going on, and then he didn't figure that uh, he he was all that. He didn't figure that you know he was a big name. He mm -hmm. didn't figure that the people would listen to him. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't figure that he would have clout, and so he kind of backed away from that. And then the third thing is that he, uh, he struggled big time with the whole idea that uh, the people don't want to hear his voice because he was going to come and bring a voice that was unpopular. He was going to say some things that basically would um, stir up the answers and he would say some things that would disrupt the status quo. Uh, as he was like, let it be, he was like, let them believe what they want, let them do what they want. I'm going to stay out here where it is safe. Um, so he had that kind of attitude where in a time of crisis, his attitude was not to engage. His attitude was not to offend. His attitude was not to buck the big boys and to buck the system. His attitude was, I think I just want to stay where it is safe. And um, it was the wrong move, and God got very angry um, with him for it. Now, why did God get angry with him for it? I think God got uh, angry with him because this is something we need to know. Uh, hear this and hear this, huh? hear this. Whenever we stay where it is safe and we estimate the consequences of taking a risk, um, uh, we are making a choice that we are go not going to follow a particular path because it's too risky. And for some, you know, you take a measure in comfort from that risk avoidance. Uh, um, risk avoidance is the antithesis um, to pursuit of destiny. I, and I really believe that with all my heart. Uh, I, hear me, risk adherence is the antithesis to risk Avoiding risk is a roadblock to getting on the way to your destiny. I think that's the way I should have said it. If you continually all your life um, back off from risks, taking risks, taking risks, you will never get on the path to your destiny. The path to destiny is not a path that is smoothly paved. The history of society really has taught us that um, progress um, requires taking risks. Progress requires looking at what's ahead, knowing that it's risky, but determining that you will, you will do it. Now, why do I say with Moses that it was the wrong move to want to stay out there in the backside of Midan taking care of sheep. Uh, because he felt that's comfortable. I am here. I am my own boss. I, I can talk to the sheep. They don't talk back to me. They don't get angry. They're not going to curse me out. But at the same time, within him, actually, since he was born, since he was born and chosen um, by Pharaoh's daughter, he had actually a divine destiny placed in his life. Oh, this is so powerful. And he was avoiding that destiny because it was risky to pursue it. To go back there where he had killed somebody in Egypt, he, he himself could be killed, he could be censured, he could be locked away, all kind of things could happen to him. 
So he felt safe where he was. But what he was doing there, he was avoiding his destiny to be the greatest emancipator this world has ever known, apart from Christ himself. I mean, Moses, I mean, you, you, I mean we, we had some big guns in the current century. Um, uh, King and uh, uh, Martin, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And my, um, we talk Nelson Mandela. We, mm-hmm. we talk about Gandhi. We talk about so, so many, so many emancipators and all of that. Um, uh, but none of them um, in in the same realm as Moses. That was his destiny, and he almost he almost failed to take such a great position because he was calculating the risk. Anytime mm-hmm. we begin calculating the risk and we become really afraid, we will stay in a position of comfort and we will stay in a position of safety. Uh, a position of, of comfort brings a sense of ease. A position of safety brings a sense of ease. But at the same time, what you sacrifice is the pursuit of a destiny. And always, always, the pursuit of destiny will involve risk. So that was basically... Uh, it doesn't sound like a sermon, right? <laughs> but but that's basically what I shared with the people mm. um, yesterday. Uh, because, again, to pursue your destiny, you will struggle. Yesterday I identified four struggles that we commonly have as humans, um, you know, with the awareness of we fail, I fail, others fail. And, and so, for example, let us take me. Um, you know, I get on the radio and I talk and I do this and do that. Uh, it's not that I am uh, the holiest one since Christ. Uh, or whatever, and, and so sometimes when you consider all of that, you're like, maybe should I be doing this? Uh, so your own awareness of who you are sometimes can get in, you know, the way of being a mouthpiece, or even your abilities. Um, you know, you're limited, and you think, well, I'm not a government official, I'm not a health official, I'm not this. So maybe I should just shut up and let people speak. Uh, we struggle with this kind of humanity. We struggle with um, how. Look, Mario, I actually mentioned in church yesterday the fact that somebody said, well, I'm sick of Pastor Richards. Mm. And, and these are the things when you, you speak things that people don't accept or you speak things from a sense of your discernment, you mm. are going to provoke the wrath of people and they're going to say things like they said about me. I'm sick of him. Mm. Uh, so, and if you, if you have trouble with that kind of criticism, you back off and you don't push and you don't lead. Uh, so this is a struggle we all have with wanting to be accepted. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when we, listen, this is important, when we want to be accepted, we coin our message. When we want to be accepted, we shape our message. When we want to be accepted, we pander in what we say. And I, I don't want to do that. Uh, so, so people struggle through that. And uh, So I, I just talked about all of this. Ultimately, what I was saying to my people yesterday, look at Moses. He almost missed out because he was playing very carefully his mm-hmm. cards to put uh, the emphasis on comfort and security and safety. And in putting the emphasis on comfort, security, and safety, he was afraid to go into the, the hotbed, mm-hmm. um, into the heart of Egypt and engage because it was dangerous. But it is in but after he decided that he would go, I mean it was dangerous, but he went into the, the heart of the crisis. It was risky, but it was in following that risk that he was able to get on the path to his destiny. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just have to weigh these things very carefully. To what extent are we going to play it safe and keep things close to our chest? Or at, at what point are we going to realize, um, look, um, uh, engagement and the risk of engagement may very well be the pathway to my destiny. I think I'm out of time. I don't have time to deal with the <laughs> the other matter of. Um, but facts don't work. So somebody remind me sometime during the week to tomorrow, again. Definitely tomorrow. Because people don't. I hear people come on your station all the time, <laughs> and we, we try facts. If you notice for, over this COVID thing, I just I give up on facts. Hmm. I am not going to win anybody over with facts. So I have been asking questions, right? Because <laughs> I already know if I come with facts, it's not going to work. It's going to anger people, alienate them, drive them away. Mm. So I ask a lot of questions. And even when I ask questions, it bothers people. But I talk at some point as to why facts just won't work. All right, All right, right Doc. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank Take you, care. Pastor. All right.